Welcome, everyone, to the Chicago Football Connection Podcast. I'm your host, Steve Letizia. Follow me on Twitter at CFC Bears. Joined by my co-host, Luke O'Grady. Follow him on Twitter at Luke O'Grady. Luke, it's been two weeks since we did a podcast. We did not do one last week. We're in the heat of the offseason, so not a lot yeah. happening. But, but it's been a while since we've talked. So, so how are you doing? How are you feeling? Yeah, good. I uh, shot my personal best in golf this morning. Shot a 74. Nice. That's Come on. Really good. That's big Man, one. 74. Yeah, Best I, I shot was an 84, 85, I think. So dude, that's you got be. so good. Anything under 90, to shoot anybody that's like playing golf, it's, if you can shoot under 90, like that's a guy that can that can like hit the golf ball like the way it's supposed to be hit. Like it's really yeah. not as easy as it sounds. Yeah, anyway, I'm yeah. shooting for a 90 every time I play golf. If I, if I break 90, I'm feeling good. Yeah. So that was good. Had that happen. Bears reported for OTAs yesterday. So we've had a yep. couple, uh, so a little bit of content. It's been some interviews. The interviews have kind of been like, it feels like over the last month or so have been like the highlight of the offseason for the Bears. Just getting to get some insight from the people that are in the building over the last little bit. Yep. You know, it feels like you kind of get some of the cookie cutter stuff. The, mm. uh, oh, he's really starting to digest the offense well. And, oh, he's yeah. making he's making some real strides. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I guess, like, whatever, we'll see. But it is good to kind of, like, this, the stuff you get from the team or the stuff that you get from, like, the interviews from the pe- the the, uh, the coaches isn't probably as valuable as, like, the uh, the information that you get from the beat, like, the people that are in there and, like, watching the practices and stuff. And so far, it's been pretty positive, it seems like. Yeah, I mean, the, the way I always look at OTA, like, uh, reports is just, they're fun. Like, it's fun to just, like, talk about football again, but I don't, you know, you can't really put a lot of stock into it. It is nice to hear good things. You'd rather hear good things than bad things. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it's just nice to just talk about Bears football again. See, you know, 10-second video clips of Tough Fields throwing a ball to, to DJ Moore. It's just fun to watch. Yeah. Not a whole lot we can take away from it until we get later in the offseason, but it is just yeah. fun. You know, it is the offseason, but Bears football still is the case. Bears football is He's back. If you want to look at it, it's easy yeah. to kind of get like cynical when it's like, mm-hmm. oh, everybody's like, oh, this is the time of the offseason when everybody looks good and pads, yada, yada, yada. But also, yeah. it is like those first clips of your 2023 Bears, and it's exciting. Yeah. Like I said, it's better. The reports are positive, and sometimes in OTAs, you do get negative reports. So yeah. I'd rather have positive than negative. Yeah. All right, so today we decided to get a, I mean, we're still going to talk Bears, but we wanted to talk about the NFC North four as a whole. Um, so we decided to rank the position groups for all four NFC North teams, Bears, Vikings, Lions, Packers. Uh, so we're going to go position by position, and we're going to give our rankings. We did tweet out a poll earlier today, so people had a chance to vote. So we have the Twitter results, and then we have our, also have our own personal rankings. So let me share the spreadsheet yeah. we have. So, again, we're going to go position by position, starting with the quarterback and going all the way through the defense. It is – we are looking at the position groups, uh, so it's not just the starters. Uh, obviously, like a position like quarterback, you're going to weight QB1 a lot higher than QB2, whereas, you know, when you get to, like, running back, wide receiver, that second and third guys make, makes a lot bigger difference. But with quarterback, it really just rank in the quarterback ones, maybe exactly. using the backup quarterback as a tiebreaker or something. But And we expect you to know that, too, those listening at home, yeah. right? The backup quarterback doesn't matter. You know that. We know that. Right. Right. When, when, when we're ranking the running back group, when you're going to see two or three of those every given Sunday, the depth's going to matter more. And we know that you know that, but also you should. Yeah. All right. So we'll start with quarterback. Uh, I want to go first because I want you to go first on running back. Is that okay. cool? Cool. Yeah. So, so I'll go first. I'm going to give my, my ranking one through four, and then Luke will give his yeah. ranking. So starting at four, I have the Packers at four. Uh, obviously, you know, Jordan Love just – too unproven, and then also their backups are probably the worst too. So that was an easy number four for me. Number three at the Lions. Um, oops, that's not what I want. Uh, Lions. Jared Goff is obviously a decent starter, but I think that's really all he is. At number two, I have the bite uh, the Bears. Uh, I just couldn't rank the Bears and Justin Fields higher than that. I think they will. He will be number one after the season. But Kirk Cousins still, you know, as much crap as I give Kirk Cousins, he's still a very solid and for quarterback. So I had to put the Vikings at one, but. Like I said, I think after this year, you put the Bears at one and for the next decade. So, but just to be realistic, as we're sitting right now, I had to put my Bears at two, which killed me, but I got to do it. 
Yeah, I mean, there's sometimes I, I, we, I said this to you before we went on that I had a feeling it was going to go like this. Sometimes I, I could probably pander to the crowd and try and do like a, like a skip and uh, a Shannon thing, but I, yeah. I, I have it rated the exact same way. Okay. Of yeah. course, Bears Twitter had us ahead, but like if you really wanted to dive into it, you'd have to be crazy to put Kirk Cousins below anybody in this division at the moment. Justin Fields has done some impressive things, but man, it's like he's I think the most touchdowns he's thrown in the season is like what, 18, 17, something like that. Like right. Kirk Pleasants has been delivering for a, like close to a decade now. He right. has, he's been putting yeah. up numbers at least. Yeah. He's the best uh, he, quarterback in the division. Yeah, as it stands right now. Right. Like I said, the, from what we would in, expect th- in 365 days this year then the conversation gets a little tougher. Right. So right now, I think you know that as a dynamic weapon, like Fields is already above where Kirk Cousins is. But as a thrower of the football, I mean, there's no one else in the division even close to Kirk Cousins right now. Right now. I agree. And if, and in that same vein, like, you know, if you wanted to put Jared Goff above Justin Fields, I would argue with it, but I could see why you would have that. I mean, Jared Goff has been a more productive passer in the NFL than Justin Fields has. Yeah. So if you're going off that, like I could see that argument as well. I just think Justin Fields' rushing ability alone kind of gets him on, on that baseline. And then just as a passer, he just has to be average to be better than what Jared Goff is. So that's why I had him there. But if you really wanted to make that argument, I could hear that argument as well. But uh, I think, you know, it's just nice to see the Packers at number four all the way across the board. And I don't think that many people across the league would argue with that. So that's just yeah. really, 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 really nice to see. Love that. Yeah, I never would have. I, I wouldn't have even really thought of putting the Lions at three as being controversial. But actually, when you say it, I guess I would get it because you could. Yeah. What what we said about Jared Goff is probably. I mean, what we said about Kirk Cousins is probably true of Jared Goff too. If you're comparing them to Justin Fields, Jared Goff has some pretty stellar passing seasons. Passing seasons that would have him as the greatest passer, you know, all time in Bears history. Kind of passing seasons, but right. despite that, like. I don't think it's controversial to say right now, like the bears have a better like option at quarterback. Like I think if the, if you asked Ben Johnson of the lions to do this, I think he would pick fields over Jared Goff as well, because I think that someone that's, you know, not a casual fan knows that Justin Fields isn't a terrible thrower of the football. They know that like last year was probably a bad example of that. And everybody knows that he is like, a game changer running the football as well. It it would it would just be surprising to me if people like I could get it, but it would be surprising to me if the general mass didn't have it kind of the way that me and you have it. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. And everything you said about Jared Goff is true. I feel like Jared Goff is a really good quarterback to have if you in the right system, and like if you have a good offensive coordinator who can kind of put him in the in the right position, then give him some weapons, but Justin Fields is a guy who can kind of transcend scene uh, scheme and kind of elevate the players around him. Right. You don't, don't see Jared Goff as kind of that guy. Um, and I think if you ask Ben Johnson, you know, like you said, if you ask him to rank him, he'd probably have it this way. And I also think if you ask Ben Johnson, who do you want on your team, Justin Fields or Jared Goff, he would say Justin Fields. So that's why I think they make sense of two here, but I could see the argument for, for flip-flopping them. Yeah, I think that's fair. Kirk Cousins is yeah. the best quarterback in the division. He's proven it. Justin and, Fields and, is the best playmaker at the position, maybe in the league. And right. Jordan Love has no right to anything but the last place in the division right now. He could be fine, sure. but as it stands, that that group looks far and away to be the worst in the division. Yeah, for sure. And if you you know just quickly, if we are looking at the backups like Nick Mullins is a, is a pretty good backup. That's yep. probably the best backup in the division. So the yeah. Vikings kind of win there too. Uh, and then PJ Walker and Nate Sudfield, you know, have experience, whereas the backers have Sean Clifford, who's a rookie. Danny Etling has no experience. So I think kind of across the board, the Packers have the worst group. Um, if we're looking at QB threes though, Nathan Peterman is, is the only one with experience. So it's crazy <laughs> that Kellen Mond is already off the Vikings depth chart. Yeah. I mean, he was cut. After one year, right? Or does he yeah. cut before even? Yeah, I don't, yeah, that is crazy. Yeah, people were what was it? Chris Sims, Chris round Sims round who had, who had him, yeah, had him over Justin, had him over Justin Fields. That's funny. Is he even in the league. Is Kellen Mond in the league? I want to say he's on like the Browns practice squad, or like he's on the Browns yeah. or something like that. I could be wrong, but yeah, I think I think someone picked him up, but he probably won't make the team. 
Yeah, I like Hennon Hooker and Jaron Hall as far as like rookies on the Vikings and Lions, but yeah. I think that kind of the way we have it, like we said, 95% of the weight of this is the starting quarterback. The backups are just kind of 100%. Like that. for sure. Uh, now, if we're talking about the next position, the backups are, I, I have four of here. So the backups are much more important, obviously, a running back. Uh, so we have uh, moving out of the running back. Why don't you you start this one? Um, give your top four. That's a good one, man. It's, it, I don't agree with Twitter. I think I think you be. Yeah. I think you absolutely have to just put the Packers one. Okay. Yeah. You have to. Aaron Jones yeah. is like over the last five years has been a top five running back. Fringe top five, definitely top ten running back in the NFL. You can't say that's true of anyone on the Bears. Yeah. That being said, after the Packers, I put Bears at two. Khalil Herbert was on a like per touch basis one of the best running backs in football last year. The truth can be said down this uh, down the stretch about Donta Foreman as well. Um, and on top of that, they added a really good third down back, pass blocking back, special teamer, and Travis Homer, and Roshan Johnson who was one of my favorite backs in the draft, fits the the need of having, you know, a better pass catching, pass blocking back that you don't really get out of Khalil Herbert. But as for, uh, from like a running the ball basis, you know, three studs, honestly, I think. Well, a couple of really, really good players. Um, I probably had... I probably have the Lions at three, and I okay. probably put the Vikings at four. I really do like Dwayne McBride for the Vikings, and I think that Dalvin Cook catches a little bit more flack than he probably needs to. I, st- I don't think he's completely like over the hill gang like some people make him out to be. Mm-hmm. But the Packers have the best room. I'm overly high. I've said it before. I love Roshan Johnson. I think Khalil Herbert's one of the best running backs in football, just as far as like running the football. And Dante Foreman and Travis Homer really fill out that room nicely. I have no problems yeah. putting them at two. I can I can understand an argument for Dwayne McBride and Dalvin Cook carrying the load as far as being the third spot, but Jameer Gibbs, David Montgomery are two really nice pieces. Yeah. Um, and uh, and yeah, I think the Vikings come in at four. All right. Yeah. I, the other thing that I we should also mention is Dalvin Cook. I have a question mark next to his name because it's possible he gets released. It's possible he gets traded. We don't even know yeah. if he's going to be on the Vikings. So his name is um, popular this off season. Right. Um, I absolutely 100 percent agree with the Packers. Um, I think Aaron Jones is really underrated. I think not only do I think he's the best running back on this list, um, I also think he's got the best receiving back on this list too. The biggest threat in the pass game. Uh, so I think they were clear number one. AJ Dillon's also a pretty good running back too. It kind of falls off after that, but that's a really good one, one, two punch. Um, I don't think they have the depth of other players, but with Aaron Jones being the best and then AJ Dillon probably being the best number two, I think I had to put them at one. Now this is where I might catch some flack because I don't view the bears running back room as highly as maybe other people do. I think Khalil Herbert's a really good runner of the football, but he doesn't provide anything as a pass catcher and he's not a good pass blocker. Uh, so I'm a little lower on him, although I think he is a really good runner. Dr. Foreman, I'm also lower on him. I think he's a solid player, but I don't think he's really a game changer. And then you got Roshan Johnson, who I really like, but he's still a rookie. Yeah. Um, and Travis Homer, who's always been just kind of third down back. So I think this is a good group. I don't think it's really a great group. And to me, if we are counting Dalvin Cook on the Vikings, which he's currently on yep, the roster, I, I actually have them at, at number two because uh, Dalvin Cook is the second best running back here. I really like Alexander Madison, too. I think he's underrated. And I think Ty Chandler and Dwayne McBride um, have potential as well. So I like that group as a whole. And then I had the Bears at three. Um, I, I still think those top four are better than the Lions' top four. Jameer Gibbs is a, still a rookie, too. You know, yeah, he was a first-round pick, but he's still a rookie. We've seen what Dave Montgomery to do can can do. He's a nice back, but I don't yeah. think he's a game changer. And then it really falls off after that. So uh, I have the Lions then at four. Um, so yeah, that, I mean, I'm just a little bit lower on on the Bears than I think a lot of people are. I mean, I know Twitter obviously put them at number one. I that's crazy to me. Uh, I think they have a nice group, and I think if Roshan Johnson can come in and be the player I think he can be, I think they can, you know jump the Vikings easily, especially if Dalvin Cook gets traded. I mean, if Dalvin Cook gets traded, then Vikings go to four. Uh, but 
Um, if Roshan Johnson can can be that guy and, and take over, then they obviously that helps a lot. But I just need to see it before I just kind of pencil him in as 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 a, a solid starter. So that's why I had the Bears at three. In 2023, do you think that there is an 1,000 yard rusher amongst this group? Amongst the Bears group or this amongst entire? The whole NFC North. I think Aaron Jones would probably get to 1,000 yards. I mean, if Dalvin Cook's on the Vikings, you know they're going to run him 300 times. Yeah. So probably him. But yeah, I mean, it's possible. I mean, Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon obviously split that pretty evenly. So it's possible the Packers don't get one. Um, I think Dalvin Cook probably has the best chance, assuming he's on the Vikings. I don't think there's any chance of the Bears having a thousand yard rusher. Same thing going with the Lions, Jameer Gibbs. And I just think they're gonna get they're gonna split the carries too much for he's not gonna get enough carries to get a thousand yards. Yeah, how many carries did he have last year? Where Herbert? That's a good question. I don't know. He could if he could get yeah, last year last year he had 130 carries. That'll go up. He'll get 200 carries this year. I would say. Yeah, I mean, I guess if he gets 200 carries, he only has to average five yards of carry to, to get there. So that's, and he's done that in his career. Yep. He averaged five but, points out um, last year. Yeah. But I mean, five yards per carry in a year with 200 carries is, is a lot. I mean, uh, yep. um, so I, that, that'd be tough. So I, I don't think he gets there. But yeah, I, I think Dalvin Cook would be really the only guy who has a chance. How many uh, rushing has Aaron Jones had last year? Yeah, I know what you mean. So Aaron, know. Aaron Jones did have have he had eleven hundred yards on only two hundred thirteen carries. Yeah, He's so nice. he has a chance he really to. He doesn't. Nice. He doesn't need three hundred carries to get there. He can get there in two hundred. Yeah, the, the, uh, the 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 era of a thousand yard rushers is dwindling, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Even with an extra game now, I mean, it's just the, the way that the the league is heading. You know. Yeah. You know, I guess if we're talking a thousand yard rushers, do we think? And we're talking about the Bears. I think the best person who has the best chance to get a thousand yards is Justin Fields, probably. He had a thousand yards last year. So pretty casually. You know, with with, yeah. some, with some missed games and sitting out the last game of the season, sitting out, maybe possibly definitely yeah. sitting out. Right. Um I don't think they're gonna, you know, have as many design QB runs. I also don't think he's gonna have to scramble as much because hopefully our wide receivers are getting open quicker and hopefully our pass projections better. So hopefully I would actually say I hope. Justin Fields doesn't rush for a thousand yards. No, I know what you mean. I, I, <laughs> like, I don't want that. Required as well, but uh, I will yeah. say though, he, that, you know, based on uh, how efficient he's looked, it doesn't it doesn't seem crazy to think he could probably pretty casually stroll to the seven or eight hundred yards though. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm fine with that. Seven hundred yards, seven fifty, eight hundred. That that's perfect. That yeah. that means we're winning some games at the ground. But I also want him to throw for four thousand yards. So I know, man. Could you so, imagine? It'll happen. It'll happen. Maybe. If not this year, then next year. <laughs> All right. What's next? Right. Receivers? Yeah. You ready to move on? Rod receivers? All right. So you went first, Madison. So I'll go first this time. Let's see where my rankings. So I got uh, the Packers at four. They just don't have anyone who's proven anything. Christian Watson had a pretty good rookie year, but he's still a rookie. And then after that, really, absolutely nothing. So the Packers were pretty easy four for me here. I got the Lions at three. I think Amon Ross and Browns and Marvin Jones are pretty good one-two punch. But, again, after that, doesn't really do much for me. Josh Reynolds is okay, but really that's it. So then it came down to the Vikings and Bears, which is what the, Bear, the Bears Twitter had. So Twitter had the Vikings at one and the Bears at two. And this was very difficult for me. I think if you – Justin Jefferson's the best wide receiver on this list. I don't think it's – I love DJ Moore. On any list. He might be the best wide receiver in football. Uh, I love DJ Moore, but Justin Jefferson's just better. Uh, but I do think the Bears, you know, the top three is, I, I don't know. I, I like Jordan Essen coming to their draft. I think KJ Osborne's, I think KJ Osborne's also very underrated. I think he's pretty good too. He might be just on par. He might actually be on par with John Armoney and Chase Claypool. Uh, so, and I actually really like Jalen Nager, Jalen Naylor. Uh, and then the, so I actually went, I'm a Bears three and Vikings one. Just because Justin Jefferson kind of just puts them over the top. The Vikings have two wide receivers named Jalen Naylor and Jalen Rager. Yeah, I think I spelled them right. Yeah, that's hysterical. <laughs> so that's that's what I am. So you match Twitter exactly, eh? Yeah, I did. I didn't even notice that. So did I. You did? Okay. Yeah. yeah. This it's almost well, like I this one was the, like. I think the best wide receiver. Not named Justin Jefferson 
is DJ Moore, but it's close, man. Amon Ross St. Brown is an awesome wide receiver. I think past the number ones, the Bears have a lot more depth. Mm -hmm. Marvin Jones is probably just as good as a Darnell Mooney or a Chase Claypool, but Darnell Mooney or Chase Claypool are both better than Josh Reynolds, and I would take Tyler Scott over Khalif Raymond for a joke. So pretty easily Bears slide into second for me. And Packers, despite the fact that I don't mind the Packers receiver group, I think Romeo Dubs is underrated. I think Christian Watson is a great player. I liked Jaden Reed. I liked Dontavian Wicks. Um, But despite that, uh, they're at four. Yeah, I think they're just, it's just too unproven. Like it could be, they could, you know, maybe Jaden Reed and Romeo Dubs like kind of take a next step and – you know, after this year, we're, we're thinking a lot higher level, them. It's just too unproven. But it was funny. I was looking at this when I was doing my rankings and I put together this spreadsheet and I was looking at all the guys the Packers had. And I was like, I remember at various points of the last couple of years, Bears Twitter pre-draft going crazy for like every single one of these guys. And like, we the Bears have to draft Christian Watson, Romeo Dubs, Jane Reed, Samari Torre, David Wicks. I know. Like they have to have them. And then the Packers got them. And then all of a sudden it's like, ah, oh, they suck. Uh, so that's just funny to me. But I do think they're clearly four here. And I like what you said about the Lions. Amon Ryan Sepra is really, really good. Um, him and DJ Moore, I think, are closer than maybe people think. But yeah. I, I would put DJ Moore ahead of them right now. Uh, yeah. And Marvin Jones is good. But, yeah, it kind of falls off after that. Yeah. I like Josh Reynolds, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think um, the Vikings – pretty clear cut number one for me justin jefferson's the best receiver in football in my opinion yeah. jordan Addison, i love i agree with you kj kj osborne is uh underrated an awesome wide receiver mm-hmm. three and the depth underneath that is awesome i yeah. think bears like well-roundedness let them take two amon right. ross st brown carries the lions to to the third spot and an unproven Packers team holds the fourth spot, but a lot of talent in that room too. Honestly, some yeah. good receivers in the NFC North. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we've kind of talked about this quarterback where obviously quarterback, the number one position that takes 95% of it. But I think, I do think you also have to weight Justin Jefferson at number one, highly too. Not as much as quarterback, obviously, but that, that really put it over the top. He has like a, he has like a psychotic amount of, he, through like three years in the NFL, he's got like forty eight hundred receiving yards. Yeah, it's crazy. It's insane. Like he, yeah, the superlatives of Justin Jefferson are like getting hard to ignore. Yeah, yeah, you, you got to put you got to put them at one right now. Forty eight hundred receiving yards and twenty five touchdowns in three years. Fourteen hundred yards, sixteen hundred yards, eighteen hundred yards. He's a bad man. Is he gonna get to two thousand next year? He's on that. That would be the trajectory. Like he is, like it would not surprise me, especially with this, uh, with the Kevin O'Connell offense. They really do like to need a player. They did it with Cooper Cup when they were with the Rams. Justin Jefferson is a must draft in fantasy right now. Yeah. All right, you want to move on to tight end? Yep, tight ends. Okay. This is, uh, you're, up. you're up. Yep. Man, it might actually be no. So we'll do uh, four coming at number four. The Lions. Yeah, just not enough depth. I actually really do like Sam Laporta, but just not enough depth. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go. uh, I'm gonna go Packers at three. I like Tucker Craft and I like Luke Musgrave. Those are both rookies this year. So the, the Packers investing heavily, having kind of let their, their, their previous starter, Robert Tunyon, go. And that room looks nice and could be great, but completely unproven. For sure. For sure. Uh, number two, your Chicago Bears. I like Cole Komet. He's not better than TJ Hawkinson. You could argue that almost no tight end in football was as good as TJ Hawkinson down the stretch. But I think Agreed. the room gets rounded out nicely with Robert Tunyon and Jake Tongs. Um, I think just based on how much the Lions and Packers are relying on rookies, you can almost default put the Bears above it. Cool, Komet had a great year last year, and he'd only, he, he'd only project to do better again this year. And uh, 
yeah, I, I kind of hinted at it earlier, but TJ Hawkinson, one of the best tight ends in football. He, he was, it was true when he was with the Lions and it's been true in his time with the Vikings. Um, him being as good as he is makes it a pretty easy choice for that to be the best tight end room in the class. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, I saw it similarly. I mean, Packers and Lions, I had to go three, four there. Uh, just that's, I mean, they're talking about three rookies essentially. The Lions have Sam Laporta and then really nothing after that. And then the Packers have two rookies and then Josiah DeGuaro, who's at least played and, 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 you know, a few years in the league. So I had Packers above them just because they had the two rookies basically and, so, and the Lions only have one. Uh, but yeah, two unproven rooms. So you can't really put them higher than the Bears or Vikings. Uh, and I flip flopped on Bears and Vikings at one, two, like a lot. I have seen Twitter had Bears, Vikings, you had Vikings, Bears. Obviously, TJ Hawkins is the best tight end here. I think Robert Tanya is a better tight end two than Josh Oliver is. I don't think Josh Oliver, Oliver really provides much at all. So it's it's kind of like it's basically like T, would you rather have TJ Hawkinson or Cole Komet and Robert Tanya? Yep. Uh, so it's really tough. I actually I have it. I, I you know I'll stick with my guys. I had Bears and then I had, and then Vikings because I think the Bears one two punch. Uh, is better there is more valuable than just just TJ Hawkinson because yeah. I don't. But I I mean I understand what you're saying. TJ Hawkinson was really really good, especially uh, when he got traded to the Vikings. Um, so he is he's definitely tight end one of this group. But I value the depth a little bit more. Yeah. So that's really. And you could also important. argue that you know maybe you kind of think Komet's a little bit closer to Hawkinson than I do, which is fair because some of the flashes from Komet last year, like his high end stuff, was like. You know, yeah, I don't think encouraging. I don't think I don't think they're necessarily that close. I think I don't think Komet ever gets to TJ Hawkinson level, uh, but I do think he can increase his his production a little bit. You know, with better weapons around him, with you know the wide receiver groups taking a step, it's going to mean more space for Cole Komet to operate with the offensive line, for hopefully protecting Justin Fields better. It's going to give him more time. So I think his production can go up a little bit. I don't I don't think he's ever going to be TJ Hawkinson. No. But um, but the two I the one two punch we're gonna you know I believe they're gonna run a, a good amount of tight uh, two tight end sense sets now that they have Tanya in the group uh, so it's almost like you, I view this as a one A one B situation um, yep to, to to TJ Hawkins is just one and then two yeah so that's yeah I mean, that. yeah the Hawkins is just a better athlete than Komet is to some extent too like it just looks smooth yeah. to him to, like yeah. you could argue that like you know. Gronk never looked too smooth. Like Gronk kind of does have like a little bit like Cole Komet kind of does move a little bit like Gronk does too. Like kind of big laboring, bumbling guy. But like uh, it, it would be some, I'd be very surprised if Cole Komet ever kind of did reach the upper end of what TJ Hawkins has already become. And that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think he can be a top 10 tight end in the league, but it's going to be like 10th, 9th or 10th, yeah. you know? Yep. Where Hawkinson's a top five pretty easily, maybe top three. Yep. Um, and then, uh, but I think Robert Tunyon, you know, I, I don't think he, I, he caught, you know, 15 touchdowns one year. I don't think he's a, he's not a top 10 tight end, but he's a, maybe a top 25 tight end in the yeah, league. Yeah, and so when he's having a good year, he's top, he's absolutely top 15. Yeah. No, he's a great, he's a great receiving option. He's a good deep threat. He's a good route runner. And he understands the offense that he's coming into. He should be like a really, really positive piece for the Bears this year. For sure. All right. Moving on to O-line. So it's me, right? Yeah. All right. So starting at four, what do I have? Where's my rankings? Where do I have? Yeah, that's what I thought. Hate to do this, but I got the Bears at four. Uh, I think this is just – this division, the Vikings, Lions, Packers all have pretty good offensive lines. Like it was tough sure. to rank and like – I think the Bears have improved, but I wouldn't put them. I, I this was an easy one for me to be honest. I wouldn't put them above any one of these three. Uh, hope, you know, maybe if Braxton Jones takes another step, John R. Wright comes in and plays like a top ten pick, maybe we can have a different discussion. Uh, but right now, I think that's that's pretty clear to me. Uh, at three, again, this was tough because I think all these all three of these teams have pretty good offensive lines, but I had the Vikings. Um, I like Derisaw. I like O'Neal. I like Garrett Bradbury's okay. Uh, I like Ed Ingram a lot, and I think Ezra in Cleveland's just okay too. Uh, but I think they have the two pretty young uh, tackle groups, so I like that. And then at three, I had the Packers at three. Oh, sorry, two, at two. Bakhtiari, 
obviously is one of the best left tackles in the game when with healthy, but I think that's a pretty big caveat. Elton Jenkins is really good. Josh Myers is good. John Runyon is good. Zach Tom's a nice young player too. So they got a pretty solid group there. And then I had the Lions at one. Again, I think this was pretty pretty clear to me. I mean, Taylor Decker's a solid left tackle. Pene Sewell might be the right, one of the best right tackles in football. Frank Ragnow is up there, best center. He's Jonah Jackson's a, a, a elite guard. Um, I'm not going to pronounce try even try to pronounce that, but he's a pretty good player too. So I thought the Lions had a pretty clear best uh, best offensive line in this in this division. Yeah, I uh, I agree with you that the Bears have the worst offensive line in the division. But, yeah. but believe it or not, that's actually the last time we agreed. So okay. I think that the third worst, despite not being a bad line. I think the third place in the division is the Packers. Okay. I could have flipped the Packers and Vikings easily, so I, I get that. Yeah. Um, you got the Vikings at one? I got the Vikings at one. Oh, wow. So, okay. I think Christian Derrissaw is one of the best offensive linemen in football. I He's like really Ed, good. I like Ed Ingram just like you do. I'm probably higher on Bradbury than you, and I love Brian O'Neill. Like you said, I think they have two really like young, talented bookends there. And I like their interior, but like um, Penny Sewell, like, you know, could be amazing. But like, to some extent, if Penny Sewell played next year, like Christian Derisaw played this year, people would be ecstatic. That's a good point. I will say that Frank Ragno is the best center in the class. Mm -hmm. And Jonah Jackson and Taylor Decker are no joke. But I'm, I'm fairly bullish on Vikings line at one. I think. Okay. Uh, uh, Lions pretty clearly at two, bit of a gap. Packers there at three, and then bit of a gap. Bears there at four. Bears line could be great. They have some pieces that if they like, if they perform to the upper side of like their um, like like performance like levels or whatever whatever you want to call it, if on the upper echelon of their like range of distributions. The Bears line could be great. Kevin Jenkins could be a pro bowler. Braxton Jones could take that step. Cody Whitehair could be, you know, take a little regress back to some of the better days that he's had. We're both bullish on Darnell Wright. Um, but I still think we're pretty solidly the worst in the, in the division. Yeah. Honestly, you kind of sold me on the Christian Darisaw thing. Like, I kind of want to flip the Vikings and Packers now. Yeah, the Vikings line is nice. It really yeah. is. I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. You know, if, if you can't, you know, if someone provide. No, 100%. You, I, this is good. This is good dialogue. Yeah, I, I think you made a good point. With the, with the Christian Dara side, with the and Pene, Pene Sewell conspiracy you made, like if, if Pene Sewell played like Christian Dara Sewell played last year. Seriously. Like, I was like, yeah, that's a very good point. I'm putting Vikings at two. Yeah, I think the Bears shorter. I don't know what they would think about Vikings at, at four. Um, but yeah, I, and I also think I might have been overrating Bakhtiari a little bit just because he's been injured and now getting older too. So that um probably played a, a part in my decision. But I think yeah, Lions, nice. Vikings, Packers, Bears. I like I like that rank that ranking. Yeah. And uh you know Boxyari's been mm -hmm. nice. Elton Jenkins is is an awesome lineman. We were we were like foaming at the bit to try and sign him ourselves. Yeah. Right. But, you know, by the same merit, um uh I would be surprised if Boxyari started getting any better than what he's at. He's already kind of on the downturn. Right. That's a good point. Yeah, and then and then like Myers and Runyon are like nice players to have. I think Zach Tom has the potential. Uh, yeah, I, I like Zach Tom too. I do. I think that the yeah. Packers, like I said, I have the Packers at three, but I think they have a good offensive line. So, yeah, the, yeah, I think this is a really good offensive line division, and the Bears unfortunately just haven't need to show more to to move up those rankings. Agreed. All right, let's move on to D line. So. I don't know how you approach this, but I put like for the example the Packers, the Packers yeah, versus Sean Gary like as an out as an outside linebacker, but he's really a pass rusher. So I include him with the D line. Um, so this uh, I also put a question mark for, against uh, next to Daniel Hunter's name. Trade talks. We don't know if he's, but he's currently on the Vikings. So I, I kept him in kind of this list. So uh, I think you're up on defensive line, right? How about the defensive line? Well, it's unfortunate to have to do it. But just like yeah. the offensive line, so brutal. So yeah. brutal. This is kind of where it stands with the Bears right now. But offensive line and defensive line, in my opinion, are the worst in the division. Yeah. 
I, you know, just get off. I have it the exact same. So it was pretty, that was kind of an easy one, unfortunately. Uh, after that, I like the, uh, I like, kind of like the offensive line as well. I like the rest of the pass rushing units here. Like, I think you could argue the best pass rusher in the class is Rashawn Gary. You could argue that maybe you could have some uh, upside with Aiden Hutchinson. Aiden Hutchinson had an absolutely foolish. Uh, is it, he's he, he, that was just his rookie year, right? Yeah, that was a foolish rookie year. And if you can imagine, he's trending in the right direction. He could be an elite defender, like on the level of like the Boses, like sooner than later. Mm-hmm. But as it stands, with Kenny Clark and Preston Smith. Uh, and adding Lucas Van Ness and having Rashawn Gary. I think that the Packers are going to be above the Lions. And I think that, oh, man. Oh, man. I'm starting to have some. some this is a tough one. This is a tough one. All right. Let's go Bears four. I okay. think that we're going to have. Oh. Go Vikings three, Lions two, Packers one. Oh, I messed Twitter. All right. Well, you know what? Yeah. Sometimes the people, the people, not all the people aren't always wrong. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess love we're... Romeo Aquora. Aquora. Yeah. Uh, John Kaminsky is great as well. Aiden Hutchinson really could be a star. Mm-hmm. Daniel Hunter is awesome. Marcus Davenport is a very Daniel Hunter like player. A little bit, a little bit, uh, a little bit thinner, but awesome pass rusher. Jacqueline Roy has a, a fairly nice pass rush to get from the interior, and we like Kiris Tonga around here. We really do. But I just don't think that that's better than, you know, Hutchinson and Kaminsky and Akora and, and Harris. Yeah. Also, I, I just realized I did not include James Houston in the Lions list. I'm going to put him in here. He had eight sacks last year. He's listed as a linebacker, but he had eight sacks last year, so he should be a play included there, too. Yeah. I was saying, so, to you, I was saying to you the other day. You know, I love those old pass rushers. I love the James Houston's. I yeah. love the Melvin Ingram's. I love the um, uh, who's the one from the Texans, and now the Browns. I love Jadavian Clowney's. I think those guys, yeah. those guys fill your roster out nicely. And it's a move I wouldn't yeah. hate to see the Bears still do. Yeah. So I'm gonna be boring, and I'm gonna rank it. Oh shoot! What did I just do there? I'm gonna rank it the exact same way. Um, yeah, unfortunately, the Bears, this was pretty easy to have them last. I think the Vikings, I like Danielle Hunter and Marcus Zanford are a good one-two punch. Marcus Zanford's injured. Daniel Hunter might not be on the team anymore. And then after that, it's just kind of nice guys to have. Not Nothing really yeah. excites you. Lions, Aiden Hutchinson, like you said, great rookie year. Ali McNeil is a really good interior pass rusher. James Houston, uh, Romeo Aquar, Charles Harris, good like situational pass rushers. So I put there. And then at the Packers, I think we're – to me, a clear number one. Kenny Clark or Sean Gary might be the two best players on this list. Uh, I mean, Kenny Clark's clearly the best Kenny interior Clark. player. Is the best interior player on this list. Or Sean Gary, probably the best pass rusher on the list. Preston Smith is a really good player to have. Devontae Wyatt. Uh, yeah, Devontae Wyatt was a first-round pick. Lucas Van Ness was a first-round pick. Kingsley and Igbari has been, had some uh, good reps. TJ Slayton, too. So Packers were, unfortunately, a clear number one for me. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you could make the argument that Daniel Hunter and Marcus Davenport are enough firepower to get the Lions to get over the Lions, just being that the Lions are carried so much by the prospect of what Aiden Hutchinson could be. Uh, but yeah. there's, no, there's no doubt that the Packers have the best pass rush in the, in the division right now. Kenny Clark sure. has been a stud for years, and Rashawn Gary has really, really come on as one of the better pass rushers. And, you know, maybe – Close in the league when he's playing at his level, he really is great. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of Lucas Van Ness, but adding him to a room like that, yeah, that that room is uh, is pretty good. Yeah, I think he, Lucas Van Ness went to a really good place for him. Got, uh, he doesn't have to start. He doesn't even have to. He be like kind of a situational guy. Totally. Uh, so I think he's in a really good position to kind of develop. Yeah. All right, uh, moving on to linebacker. So I'm up now, right? Yeah. So, uh, finally, we're. I feel like we've had a couple, you know, bad Bears ones in a row, but that's not the case here. I got the Vikings at four. They just don't really have much at all. Brian Asamoah is an okay player, but 
Oh, there, that's Houston. where you got James Houston right there. Oh, okay. So I had him with the uh, – yeah. He, did, he had eight sacks. So he did – I was going to say, I, like, I could have sworn I put him in here. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, he's uh, – uh, I well, whatever. No matter where you play him, he's, he's a good player. Uh, so I have the Vikings at four. What do I have? I have the Packers at three. Uh, Devondra Campbell, I really like. Uh, Quay Walker didn't have a great rookie year, but he's still young. I think he has potential. Uh, but doesn't don't they don't really have anything after that. Then I have who do I have a two? Get I have this. I have the Lions two, and then the Bears finally getting up to one. Uh, I actually really like the Lions group. I really like Malcolm Rodriguez a lot. Um, and then they went out and got the best linebacker in the draft with Jack Campbell. Totally Alex Anzalone, he's a decent player. I like that group a lot. But Tremaine Edmonds, T.J. Edwards, Jack Sanborn, I think that's the best three linebackers in here. I mean, Jack Sanborn's clearly the best third linebacker of this group. It's uh, damn near the best linebackers in football. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, really like that. So I, I actually almost put the Lions above them, but I, I figured I'd show the Bears some love, put the, put the Bears there. Wow, that's surprising to me. This was by far my easiest one. I think the Bears yeah. far and away have the best linebacking group of this of this uh, division. And I would say that pretty much, as far as I'm concerned, only the 49ers have a better linebacking group in football. Okay. 49ers have, have uh, um, Greenlaw, and they also have uh, – it's funny that I say Greenlaw first and don't mention what, – what's uh, – who, who's their um, – Fred Warner. Oh. Fred Warner and Dre Greenlaw are such an unbelievable one-two punch. But the Bears linebacking core, especially last year on a year-by-year -year basis, is right there with them. So I got the Bears at number one. I got the Packers at number two. I'm actually – I'm fully the same as Twitter. I got the Lions at three, although I hear you. I love Jack Campbell, and I like Malcolm Rodriguez, and I think that they could easily be two by the end of the year. And yeah, I got the Vikings at, at four. I, nothing, nothing a whole lot to be excited about there. Yeah, yeah the Vikings. That's a, that's a rough group. The two Troys. Yeah, yeah. Who I I really never heard of. So Troy, <laughs> Troy and Troy. The fact yeah. that Noah Sewell is the uh, the fourth linebacker for the Bears is pretty impressive. That's a good, really good. That, that's a really good group. Yeah, it, it is a really good good group. I, yeah, the only reason like. I didn't seriously consider putting the Lions above the Bears, but I just really love Malcolm Rodriguez. I thought I really liked him coming out of the draft. I wanted the Bears to get him. And then he came in as like a six round pick and and played really well as a rookie. So I, I just really like him. I think that's that's a good young group that they have. Um that's gonna be really solid. But yeah, the Bears to me, Bears, Lions, Packers, Vikings, I like that that ranking. Yep. All right. Corner on cornerback. Yeah, uh, you're up. See, wow, this Fuck. was another tough one. I felt like I'm up. Yep, all right. Coming in at number four, I got the Vikings. Yep, I like Mackie Blackman. I do too. It's kind of, it's kind of, I feel like all the positive I can say about that group right now. Byron Murphy's a great player. Yeah, but I'm, yeah, I like Andrew Booth too. It's like a developmental guy, but we'll see. Um, I feel like I'm gonna piss people off with this. I got the Bears at three. Okay. At the Bears at three, I mean, I like Jalen Johnson. I like Kyler Gordon. I like Kendall Vildor. Tyreek Stevenson added to the group is good, but you can't rely on him. And despite all those players that I like. I don't know if you could say that any of them have ever been great. Like Jalen Johnson yeah. can show it on a game by game basis. He's shown that he can stack up with some of the best receivers in the league, but on a season by season basis, he just doesn't like establish himself as like, he doesn't like set like a baseline where it's like, I can compete with the best in the league, but I'm also not ever going to be bothered by some of the worst in the league. Like he can just yeah. get toasted by anybody. It feels like. Um, mm -hmm. And for that reason, I'm going to put the Bears at three. I mean, I don't love the Lions group, but I really like the Lions group. I love the Cam yeah. Sutton ad. I love Emmanuel Mosley. CJ Gardner Johnson is an awesome ad. Brian Branch is an awesome ad. He might have been the best straight, like, slot cover player in the draft. Yeah. Um, so while I don't think that they have a star, 
I think they have mm. a lot of really, really good players that can like, you know, pressure makes diamonds. Three of those people are going to be on the field. And, and if they're going to pick the three best from that group, they're probably going to have three players playing pretty well. And I, I don't think the Bears have much firepower either. Jalen Johnson might be the best corner of any of those guys. But I think that the Lions, while not as flashy, just have better like quality players right now. And until we know a little bit more, maybe with Harry Stevenson. Yeah. And a pretty easy choice for the Packers. Yeah. Will Douglas is a playmaker. Totally. Eric Stokes is – is trending in the right direction, and he's a freak athlete. And Jair Alexander, Alexander at, at what is an increasingly hard position to be consistent at, is one of the most consistent cornerbacks in football over the last three or four years. Yeah, so I had it the exact same way. Um, and you basically like took the words out of my mouth for every single team. Like the Vikings, they have you know some maybe some intriguing guys, but not too much. The Bears, I agree with you. I, mean, I think Jalen Johnson's a good player and probably better than anyone the Lions have, but a little too, a little too inconsistent. And then after that, Cal Gordon played bad last year. Tiger yeah. Stevenson's a, a rookie. Kendo Vildor is what he is. Charles Smith's a rookie, so they're just way too unproven to rank them for the Lions. Whereas the Lions, like you said, Cam Sutton's a solid player. Manny Mosley is a solid player. C.J. Gardner Johnson's a solid player. Brian Branch, I thought was one of the best. The best was the best nickel cornerback in the draft. Yeah. And I think he'll be a day one starter for them. Yeah. So that's just a very solid group. Had to put them. And then, yeah, Jay Alexander, one of the best corners in the league. Rizero Douglas can gamble a little bit, but can also make some plays uh, and, and, tr- and get uh, interceptions. Eric Stokes is a good young player. And Keyshawn Nixon as their like, slot corner. I think that's a good group, too. So, yeah, to me, that was like, – we kind of synced up there, which I think is like really the first time or, or maybe only the second time we've had like the same rankings. Nice. Cornerbacks. All right, what do we got next? Safeties? Safety. So I'm up now. So then I had uh, the Packers at four. Darnold Savage kind of took a step back last year after it being like somewhat solid previously. And then after that, they have absolutely no one. Uh, I got the Lions at three. I think Kirby Joseph's a nice player. Tracy Walker is an okay player. And then kind of nothing after that. Uh, I have – this might piss some on. people off, but I got the Bears at two. Um, I, I know people, the obvious people are, I, I, that might piss be some people off, but I love Eddie Jackson, obviously, uh, when healthy, he's one of the best safeties in, in the, in the league. Jaquan Brisker had an oak, had a good rookie year, but not a great rookie year. He was out of position yeah. a few times. And then after that, they really don't have anything. Elijah Hicks and Adrian Colbert, like yeah. nothing. So I, I had them at two and then I had the Vikings at one Harrison Smith, Probably not as good as, as Eddie – definitely not as – well, probably not as good as Eddie Jackson, but he's still a really solid safety. Lewis Seen, I think he got hurt last year, but I really like him uh, if he's able to come back healthy. And then Cameron Bynum played a little bit last year, and Josh Metellus has played. So I think they got better depth than what the Bears have, so I put the Vikings at, at one. Twitter had the Vikings at four? Yeah, I didn't get that. Twitter tripping. I think this one, the Bears had were a, a pretty runaway. It was like eighty percent or something like that at one. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, I got the I got the Lions at four. Okay. I, I like Kirby Joseph and Tracy Walker. And like you said, it, there's not really much after that. If you have to Melon Fawn with, I was he in his second year now. It'd be nice to see him yeah. maybe extended playing time. He's a good athlete, but hard to say. Um. Number four, I got the Packers. I agree. I think Ruby Ford is a nice player. He's not he's not gonna win you any games, but hopefully, you know, no news is good news type player. If you don't talk about him too much, he's probably having an all right game. Um, I have the Vikings at two. Harrison Smith is, is like it's surprising how good he has stayed, to be honest. He's been very consistent. Yeah, I know, but it's also looking like he's slowing down a little bit. Um, sure. And just as far as like top two, not really worrying too much about the third safety because how often they're really going to come in. I like J- I like Jackson and Brisk over here over Smith and Scene. Just just kind of that simple. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I've I view kind of Brisker and Scene kind of similarly. I mean. Brisker played more only because Seen was hurt, but before Seen got hurt, which was a pretty like devastating leg injury, if I remember. So possible he doesn't come back the same player, but he was playing pretty well. 
I believe, before he got injured. That's the, that's yeah. kind of the reason I had him higher. But yeah, you could flip flop. I could flip flop them pretty easily. Yeah. All right, that's it. Oh. We did it. Let's go through. It. Let's. I just wanted to see like where. So the Bears. If we just look at the Bears, we had the Bears at two for quarterback. Bears at three and two for running back. Bears at two for wide receiver. Bears at one and two for tight end. Fourth uh, for O line and D line. That's not good. One at linebacker, three at corner, and then one two at safety. So not that bad. I mean the off the offensive line, defensive line is tough. But I think this is in terms of the whole NFC North. That's a very that's a strength of like those other three teams. Um, but other than that, they kind of held up pretty well. Yeah. Man, and maybe we're biased. It's possible about, we're biased, but yeah, definitely. I we try. I, although we do try and we do a pretty good job of trying to stay fairly uh, unbiased about it when we can. For sure, for sure. I will say, I think um, with the uh, with the offensive line and defensive line, I was thinking today because I saw they, they were doing some some piece on uh, the favorites in the NFC on NFL Network, and they were talking about the San Francisco 49ers additions. And it got me thinking about uh, uh, Javon Hargrave. And it made me think, man, like, with the money the Bears still have, like how differently would you view the Bears right now if they had added Javon Hargrave to, to that room? Well, let's, let's take a look at the D-line. Let's say they did have Javon Hargrave. Do they pass the Vikings in your mind? They like, might. Probably not. Not it's it'd be close. Uh, I don't, I don't know if it you, does. If you look at your interior as Andrew Billings, Gervin Dexter, Zach Pickens, and Javon Hargrave, and Justin Jones, you're like, man, that's a pretty good interior group. I would say that might be what the top interior group, maybe. Right. Maybe, maybe not the Packers, but it would it wouldn't be the fourth interior group. I'd say. No. Yeah. I think the the Vikings would be the fourth interior group. Then 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 maybe yeah maybe the Bears then the Lions. I don't know, but yeah. I, so I, I think that gets them to more respectable D line, but I think right now they they might have the worst defensive line in football. I I think they probably do have the worst defensive line. Yeah, in football. It's bad. Without without seeing you know some of the other teams, maybe maybe they're maybe they're twenty nine thirtieth, but they're down there for sure. Yeah, that's bad. And 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 to be fair, it could it could be not so bad, but it isn't good. At least at no, the moment, it's not good. It's not good. But hey, that's this offseason's not over. They've said that they're looking at edge rushers. There's not going to be a guy that they can bring in that's going to probably take them out of last place here. But maybe there's a guy they can bring in that takes them to to 25th, 24th, 23rd in the in the NFL or something like that to make them at least respectable. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, it, I it's kind of seemed like something what was going to happen by now based on how they were talking a few weeks ago where it was Ryan Poles and Maddie Buflu saying something's going to happen soon, but nothing's happened yet. Uh, a couple, Leonard Floyd went to the – where did he go? He went to the Bills. Bills. He's off the board. Um, so it's dwindling. The options are dwindling, but hope they should. They will probably bring someone in uh, yeah. before the training camp, hopefully. There's and then you also have to keep out for – It has to be spent. There's $45 yeah. million dollars the Bears still have to spend. And we've said, you know, that some of that will be probably spent towards re-signing some, some dudes in-house, someone like a Jalen Johnson or someone like a, uh, a Cole Komet. But yeah. there, there, there are still some, some hefty contracts that are going to have to get handed out to people that aren't currently on the Bears at the moment. Yeah. So I mean, the roster maybe. now might not exactly be the one going, we have going into the season. I mean, there were reports of the, that Daniel Hunter is on the trade block. Um, you know, I know there's not a lot of in-division trades, but we saw it last year. The Vikings traded TJ Hawkinson to the Lions. So clearly the Vikings are fine with trading in the division. Maybe that's something that they explore and that that's how, that's how they spend their money. They spend their money by trading for him and giving him a new contract because uh, that's that's why he's on the trading block in the first place because of contract yeah, disputes. Right. So. As long as the price is right for a trade, you know. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You yeah, know, from adding someone to that room for sure. But um, like with the expectation that we're probably not going to be world records next year anyway, I I don't think that they should get desperate and trying to add someone to that room. If you know what I mean. No, I I agree with you. I just actually just want to look up. So Daniel Hunter's tw twenty nine this year. So does that really fit into your timeline? Obviously, he's a really great pass rusher, but. 
do you trade for a guy who's going to be 29, probably 30 when you're competing for something? Yeah. I'd rather, to me, I'd rather probably keep our keep our picks and, and build for the draft. Um, but you know, you never know. Maybe they maybe they think differently. All right. Any, anything else to add before we wrap up here? No, I don't think so. I mean, it looks like we only the only one that had full uh, full agreement was wide receivers and D line. Is that yeah? Is that what it was? Wide receiver. Yeah, with Twitter and and us. That's interesting. Yeah. That those ones were easy as far as we were concerned. Yeah, I think so. All right. Well, thanks everyone. I think the uh, I think the Bears aren't in such a bad spot. I mean, the I don't. We've said all off season that the way you win games, aside from having a quarterback, is by winning the winning like the uh, the trench warfare on offense and defense. And for the Bears to have the worst in the division, as far as we're concerned, on both those sides isn't great. But you know, yeah. there's more. I think there's more talent on the Bears roster than some people are currently giving it credit for. For sure, and it's you know no matter what, even the biggest haters of the Bears will say will can admit that the Bears are in a much better spot this year than they were going into last year. So it's it's good to see that upward trajectory, trajectory at least. Yep, agreed. Yep. All right. Well, thanks everyone for listening. We'll be back probably next week. Hopefully next week, talking about I don't know. We'll figure it out probably a day before we do it, like we always do. Uh, so we'll be back next week. Thanks everyone for listening. Make sure to like, subscribe, follow us on Twitter, uh, and we'll talk to everyone then. Bear down, everyone.